Okay. Um, so. All right, so today. Uh, I'm sorry. All about conversions here. So we start out here, and we're going to do one simple conversion. And if you look at this path to success here, notice how all of these things, these islands, to get from one thing to another, you have to go through moles. So the whole point of this is that most of these things, a lot of them will involve a two-step calculation. So the first thing that you always do here is this. Write down what is given. So we have here, number one, calculate the number of formula units in 12.5 moles of calcium carbonate, or CaCO3. So again, make your life easy. And we have 12.5 moles of calcium carbonate. Now we're gonna make a conversion. So what we need to do here, what we need to do here is just go ahead and set up that conversion factor so you have an X with a line there. And then think through this. This is really, really key. It's in your packet so you don't have to memorize it. But one mole of anything, does anybody know how many particles or pieces it has? The big number. What's the big number on the, the molar or the mole island sheet? Too easy. Okay, so one mole of anything equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, on that, I think it says uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and it goes to atoms. This thing can be substituted out for atoms, formula units, which formula units is an ionic compound, or if we had something like sugar, which is all covalently bonded, we call those molecules. So, again, atoms, molecules, and formula units can all be exchanged out for uh, your unit here. So in this case here, this is formula units. Now, I'm just going to abbreviate that as form units to save some space. And now we have to set up the conversion. So the key here, the key to success is that diagonal units have to cancel out. So because we have moles of calcium carbonate on top, diagonal from that, we have to have moles of calcium carbonate. Now, what we do or what we can do here is that because we have this conversion factor of one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we can go straight from moles of calcium carbonate to formula units. And again, I'm going to abbreviate that as form units. And then from there, we have some numbers that we have to fill in always turn to your conversion factor. So what is the number in front of uh, mole? One. 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 So in your conversion, you put one there. And then what is the number in front of formula units? Yep, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now before you calculate it, anytime we have scientific notation, Make it easy on yourself and put that in parentheses because if you don't put it in parentheses, your answer will get lost in the sauce. Uh, mouse in the salt, salt so, mouse. so in your calculator, you put 12.5 times parentheses 6.02 uh, times 10 to the times 10 to the 23rd. Saw some people calculating. Yeah, I'm on slow. <laughs> Today is really Pew. Pew. seven point five two five times ten to the twenty five. Yep. So anybody get anything different besides that? I got six point oh two times ten to the twenty third. I don't know. How okay. <laughs> no big deal. Oh. Oh. Okay. So now just put multiply by twelve point five. My driver. Oh, I think I just forgot that. There you go. Now you got that. Probably. Anybody else? Troubles? Can't you, um, couldn't you just take 12.5 times 6.02? You could, yes. 
if you're if you really think so? Yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, the answer here. I'm going to do some rounding, and because we have three digits here, but it would be 7.53. We round that two up times 10 to the 24th. So 7.53 times 10 to the 24th. Now units. Make this easy on yourself because right now, whatever we have in this upper right hand corner is our units. So in this case here, because we have formula units, this is formula, formula units, and then we always need to indicate the substance as well. So it'd be formula units of calcium carbonate. So that's kind of a two-face unit there. And that would be our answer at 7.53 times 10 to the 24th formula units. And yeah, right. you only want two decimal points too. So from here on, notice how there's only three, we call those significant digits. So your answer should only have three digits total. Okay. And, and whether that includes a decimal, it just depends. But in a scientific notation, it will be two decimals. <laughs> Are we doing this whole thing in class? I'm going gonna, gonna to pick a couple more, and then we're going to do all of the back. When will this be due? Well, hopefully tonight, but we'll see how far we get. Okay, this next one here. We have 4.59 times 10 to the 25th atoms of AG, which is silver. So same thing. We write down what is, is given. So right now we have 4.59 times 10 to the 25th atoms of AG silver. So always make your life easy. Write down what's given. Then we're going to make a conversion factor, so we might as well knock out the setup for that conversion with the X in the line. And then we need to think about our units. So I said one mole, or somebody told me one mole is always going to equal 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, but we can substitute that particles out for atoms, formula units, or molecules. Because we're dealing with atoms, we're going to say, hey, this is going to be atoms. So again, that Avogadro's number, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, can be subbed out for atoms, molecules, or formula units. We take the knife hand out, we cancel diagonal, and I made a mistake here, I should say atoms of AG. We cancel diagonal, so that means what unit needs to be on the bottom right here of the conversion? 6.02. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with unit, because that is oh, atom. Yeah, so we start with atoms of AG, and then what are we trying to convert to? Moles. Moles. And now, I mentioned this in notes, but moles, for whatever reason, they abbreviated as MOL. It really saves us that time to not put the E there. But you'll see mole written as M-O-L-E or M-O-L. Now, what number is associated with mole again? 6.02. No mole. Oh, I'm sorry. No. One. One. Okay. Sorry. So all we do next to that mole is we put one. Now it is on top because we're doing the reverse process. What number is associated now with atoms? The number I said. Yep. The Avogadro's are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now again, do yourself a favor. As you go to calculate this, Put that in a set of parentheses. So in your calculator, you would need a set of parentheses around 4.59. I'm going to make that Oh here. my god. 4.59 times 10 to the 25th. You close the parentheses, you divide it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and you press enter. And again, you can round to three total digits because we start out with three total digits here. Seven six point two. Oh, such a genius. Hey, what'd you get? Seven six point two odd. Oh, sick. So you got quite time? Yeah. Sick. That's really sick. I didn't do my math. Yeah, you could just. We had math last night. 
Okay. What, what, what do we get here? Today? I heard it. Six seven point sixty two seventy six point seventy six point two. Seventy six point two. Did anybody not get that? Good. I'm now the answer the answer also needs to include what for our units? Mole. Moles. And we gotta go one step further here. Moles of what substance? AG. AG or silver. So that's key for success here. Let's do one more on the front side. We'll see if we have time to do the others, but let's do number three. So I'll scroll down on the page here, and then we will go from there. Hey, so I, I think we can do this whole puppy. We, we might. We, 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 focus. Focus. we got plenty of time. I worked up. We focus here. I'm tunneled. OK, I'm going to scroll down to number three here. All right, number three. A little bit different, and we do need the periodic table for this. So let me erase. Let me erase what we have here, and we have to. We have to get in the mindset here of, of what we're about ready to do. So now, we start out with 125 moles of neon. I know. So first thing we always do is what. Um, write down. Write it down. Yeah, write down what's given. So one. 25 or 125, I'm going to write that bigger, uh, 125 moles of neon. Is it N -E? that, well, what is it again? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. It is NE. Make the abbreviation there, so that's moles of neon. We're going to have to make a conversion, so you might as well set this up. And then we have to turn to the periodic table. So we find Ne or neon, and for the molar mass, every one mole of neon oh God. equals or is equivalent to that average atomic mass, which neon has a decimal number of 20.1797. So everyone see that decimal number there? Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do in this class, we need to round to two decimals. So that would round to 20 point what? One eight. Yep, so neon's molar mass. There is 20.18 grams of neon in every one mole of neon. So we'll keep that in the mind. We gotta set up the conversion. We cancel out diagonal, so what? unit has to be down in the bottom right. Mole. Mole of neon. We are trying to convert to grams. So grams of neon would be in the top portion here. And now we turn to the conversion or the conversion factor we just took to set up. So the number in front of moles. One. One. So we put one right there. And 20.18. Yep. 20.18 is the number of grams. All we have to do is take 125 times 20.18, and we would divide it by one, but to three total digits, and we'll have to do some rounding here. Oh. Three total. <laughs> oh. Um. So, so in your calculators, you get 2,522.5, right? It would be like times 10 to the second or something like that. Well, you could put it in scientific notation, oh. but you could also just go 2520, so 2,520 when we round it. And then what is that unit? Neon. Grams. Grams of neon. Yeah, we'll use combination. Grams of neon. So all we did is we looked up on the periodic table, hey, what is that number there? We made it convert it, or we plugged it in our conversion, and we got our number. Yeah, where is it? What is it? So when it only says mass and grams, we do the atomic mass. Yep, whenever you see mass, you're gonna have to use the average atomic mass on your periodic table. All right. All right, we're gonna skip right now four and five, so that way we can do all of them on the back. Um, any questions at this point? No, sorry. 
Now, this right here, this right here, um, is the new stuff. I don't know how, how many of you actually got to 11.3 notes yesterday, but what we'll do is I'm going to walk you through. There are steps on the notes, and so we'll start out here with number six and seven, and then we'll move down to the remaining two. So again, I, I get that you guys haven't had this or you haven't done the notes yet. You haven't had this fully. Uh, so what I want you to do is just pay attention, ask questions if you have them, and we'll go from here. So we want to determine the molar mass. We want to determine the molar mass of silver nitrate. And so the first thing is silver nitrate. We have to have the formula for silver nitrate. Now, to save some time, I'm just going to give you the formula. You can look it up. But silver nitrate has the formula of AgNO3. So AgNO3 is the formula for silver nitrate. And then all we do for the molar mass is we list out every single element involved in that compound. So what we're going to do is we're going to list out Ag. We're going to list out N. And we're going to list out O. Once we have each of those things, we're going to break it down by each and every element. Um, so we start out with Ag. We go and we find the average atomic mass, the decimal number on the periodic table. And if we find Ag and we round it to two decimal places, what is that average atomic mass? What's that? Decimal places are two. Uh, two. Two, did I say three? No, I oh. thought it was three. That's why I said that. We'll use two. Yes, Jerry, Jerry. Will it be? Number 47. Yeah, I see it. I just don't know what that is. It's 107, right? Yeah. So you have 107, and then that would round to. What's that in 0.7? You can leave it exactly like that. Oh, I thought it was two then. Well, two decimals. Uh, two decimals. Yeah, fair. God, I'm stupid. No. So when you round no, that. 0.87. Yep. No, 0.87. Everyone see that on the periodic table? Now, that would be, hey, for every one mole of AG, we have that many grams. It's okay, Perry. So now what we need to do is this. We also need to multiply it by how many AGs we have in the formula. How many AGs do we have? Uno. One. So anything times one is it's the same, same number. So we go here and we have 107.87, and it's still in the unit of grams per now we do the same thing for nitrogen. Again, this <laughs> rounds to two decimal places, so what would the molar mass of one mole of nitrogen be? 14.07. Yep. So we have 14.01 grams per mole. Then we look to our formula. What is the number of nitrogens we have? Who knows? One, so we multiply this by one. That makes our life a lot easier. So we have 14.01 grams per mole. Now we go to oxygen. And there's some severe rounding here. We'll just make it 16. Yeah, so oxygen we just round to 16. To be specific here, I'll say 16.00 grams per mole. But how many oxygens do we have and need to multiply by? Trace. Three, because there's three in our formula. If we put in 16.00 times three, what is that? 48. 48.00 grams per mole. Now the last step is really easy. So everything that we have here on the right, all we need to do is add them together. So we 
get 169.88 grams per moles of, always include the substance here, AgNO3. So what that means for us is this. For every one mole of silver nitrate, for every one mole of silver nitrate, there is 169.88 grams in that one mole. Questions? Okay, we're gonna need some more space, so I'm gonna scroll down to the uh, next problem there. And we'll go from here. Okay, Daisy. Oh, oh. All right, here we go. All right. So on this one here, we're going to move a little faster because now we know how to calculate the molar mass. But now we want to determine the mass. So the mass always tells us what unit should we have at the end. <laughs> Yeah, grams, all right, of sodium dichromate. And I gave you the formula here. So we always start out and we write down what we have. So right now we have 8.57 moles of sodium dichromate. Now, again, we're going to go through this process relatively quickly. We set up that conversion. But out to the side here, out to the side here, I'm going to calculate the molar mass, just like we did. So we start out here. We start out here, and we have everything listed. So I'm just going to list out everything. So we have Na, we have Cr, and we have O. Now, sodium. We look up the molar mass, the two decimals there. What is the molar mass of sodium? 23. Um, we still have Three, two point. Yeah, it'd be 22.99 grams per mole. Shut up, Barry. You're wrong. We I'm multiply that by how many sodiums in our formula? See, you have a math problem. Yep, we multiply that by two. So somebody do that for me real quick. 45.98. Okay, 45.98 grams per mole. Chromium. I'm Look up chromium. What is the molar mass? Uh, uh, Do it, Ron. Uh, el element number 24. Yep. 52.00 by the time you round it. Now, how many chromiums do we have? In, uh, we have two. So somebody help me out. What is 52 times two? Okay, 104. Exactly. And that is still units of grams per mole. Now, we have oxygen. What you told me from the last problem had a molar mass of? 16. 16. How many oxygens do we have? Seven. Okay. So somebody help me out. 16 One times 7? 112. 112. No. Now, now what we need to do, I know it's not written perfectly, but add 45.98 plus 144.00 plus 112. 261.98. 261.98. Yeah. Okay. You're so 261, 261.98 grams per mole of sodium dichromate. So what this means, more importantly, what this means for us is that in every one mole of sodium dichromate, there is one, or excuse me, 261.98 grams. So now we turn to our conversion factor. Don't worry about numbers yet. What unit needs to cancel diagonal? Mole. Moles of sodium dichromate. So I write out moles of sodium dichromate. And then on top, I can get to grams of sodium dichromate. So, moles, what is the number in 
front of moles that we've just taken. One. one. What is the number in front of grams yeah. here? 261.98. Too easy. 261.98. Too easy. So all we need to do on our calculators is take 8.57 times 261.98.
Crap. grams of copper to nitrate. We want on top moles of copper to nitrate. We take out, we take out our values here. So what number is in front of grams? 187.57 grams for every how many moles? One. So in your calculator, all you have to do is take 456 divided by 187.57. So I'm getting anybody else? Anything different than 2.43? No, sir. Good. What time do we get out of here? 33, I think. All right, two minutes. So what I want you to do, there's three problems. The two we didn't do on the front, this one. I will tell you this is a three-step mm -hmm. problem on number nine. Yeah, I agree. So you have to combine what you did. Combine what you did on the front side with Avogadro's number. And then you need to find the molar mass and use it to find the mass of sodium hydroxide. To help you out too, sodium hydroxide has the formula of NaOH. So what do we gotta do tomorrow? Two notes, that homework check in this. Uh, the homework check, homework check. Scan this in by the night. And the two notes, the two notes.